My name is Casey Margus, and I survived the Las Vegas mass shooting on 2017. My parents had to actually purchase tickets to go to the Route 91 Harvest Festival in Vegas. They decided they didn't want to go, so they gifted my sister and I tickets to go to the festival. The third day, which was on October 1st, was the day of the shooting. <laughs> Ali and I were just in a mass shooting. We're currently okay. We love you. We love you so much. I remember when we were walking to the entrance, I said to my sister, hey, why don't we not go in and why don't we go get food somewhere else on the strip? Allie and I love to be where the action is. Like we like to be on the pit. Her and I get as close as we can to the stage and we're like, okay, perfect. We have perfect spot. Jason Aldean, the main act of the last night came on stage and he had played, I think, a couple of songs. Shortly after that was the first round of gunfire. The first round, everybody thought it was fireworks. It was about 10 p.m. at night and it was completely dark outside. My sister and I immediately looked at each other. We both knew that it wasn't fireworks, but everyone around it was kind of like the entire crowd wanted to believe it was fireworks. But then when you look in the sky, a clear Vegas sky, there were no fireworks. After the second round of shots and the third, everyone's like, this is a shooting. You began to see people around you getting hit. And that's what made it really real. At this point, somebody within the crowd shouted and said, everybody get on the ground. We just all got on the ground. I'm squeezing my sister's hand and saying that I love her. She's squeezing mine back and she kept saying, I love you, Casey. We're going to get out of here. The most traumatic part of that whole ordeal when we were on the ground was um, the sound of my sister's voice when she looked up and um, she told me, um, sorry, she was like, Casey, her head is bleeding. Her head is bleeding. It was a girl who was right next to us, just a few feet away from us, dancing in our area earlier. I mean, these were people that we had spoken to minutes prior. These were people that we danced with. These were people that we cheered with. The sound of my sister's voice in that moment is what really made it real for me, is what made okay, this is actually happening. This is not a dream. At this point, everybody is frantic. I mean, it's a c complete chaos. People are screaming, crying. And then there was that moment of, okay, this isn't a good idea. We shouldn't be on the ground. We need to get the F out of here. My sister and I ran to, if you're facing the stage, we ran to the right of the stage. We spotted people beneath the stage. The man was like flagging us to go under the stage. So we ran under the stage. At this point, I get out my phone. We have this family group chat with um, my parents, my brother, my sister and I, and I just sent, we're in the middle of a mass shooting. Pray, we're safe right now. I love you, I love you so much. You're the best family ever. You're like, I just kept sending, I love you. After I sent those texts, I call my mom. My sister was like, Casey, we don't have time. Like, we need to get out of here. And I'm like, no, I need to call mom and tell her what's happening. So I call my mom and I just said to her, mom, we're in the middle of a mass shooting. She immediately started singing to me. It was just this surreal moment of being on the phone with my mom and she's singing, you are my sunshine, and I'm singing it with her. Imagine being underneath the stage where people are dying around you and screaming and crying and not knowing if you're about to get hit with a bullet and just singing, you are my sunshine. And I'm singing with my mom. And then she says to me that she can tell it got quiet and the shooting had ceased. She said, uh, Casey, I think it may be a good time for you and Allie to leave, to get off the phone and keep getting out of there. On the other side of the stage, it was even more chaos. 
And there was one concert staff member who stayed during the shooting. He pointed us where to go, where the exit would be, where to run. The only exit was by the entrance, which was way on the opposite side of where we were. My sister and I are just running through this parking lot. And as we're running, you see just puddles of blood everywhere. You see discarded cowboy hats, you see random shoes, purses, cell phones, just the aftermath of when everybody fled because my sister and I were one of the last groups to actually get out of the venue. As we were running, we're seeing what had happened 10 minutes earlier. At this point in time, the police officers had created a safe space. My sister said, no matter what we do, we're not going where they're leading people. Where officers send groups that have survived is normally where a shooter would go next. I mean, at this point in time, we had no idea where the shots were coming from. We didn't know it was a psycho inside of Mandalay Bay shooting down on everyone. About five to 10 minutes after that, my sister gets a call from her friend Kylie and Kylie says, we're near the Motel 6 in a parking lot. They've closed the strip. We can't go any further. This is as far as we can go. You girls are going to have to run to us. I remember seeing Kylie's truck. My sister and I are holding hands and we're just sprinting. It's like seeing the, the finish line. We make it to the truck. Um, we pile up as many people as we can in the bed of the truck. We're in the back of the truck looking at each other and just started bawling. The entire time of the shooting, my sister and I didn't cry. We didn't scream. Neither of us. That was the first moment where we let ourselves feel what had just happened. I felt so much guilt the following day um, when numbers started to come out and the amount of people who had passed away. I mean, this was the largest mass shooting in the United States in modern history. Why did I make it out? But so many people didn't. Post-shooting was a difficult time Obviously, the first few months were me pretending to be fine. Months go on and I'm diagnosed with PTSD. PTSD is no joke. A loud sound can put me right back in the moment of being shot at. The sound of fireworks is very difficult for me. I keep my composure really well, but I am super anxious 24-7. <laughs> Since the shooting, I have been modeling more full time. I've been selling more artwork than I ever have. It's really special to me knowing that my pieces of art help other people and they're being displayed all over the US, hopefully soon all over the world. A huge thing for me is turning pain into purpose. I've had other people reach out to me not only survivors of the Vegas shooting, but of other mass shootings that have reached out to me and thanked me and said, I didn't know how to voice what I went through and you voiced it. I've actually made several friends out of it from other shootings or from the Vegas shootings. We have this undeniable kinship with each other. We're survivors and we know what the other person is feeling, knowing that there is still so much humanity out there and there are so many good-hearted people that is what i think keeps me going my parents had gifted my sister and i these tickets you can imagine as parents the amount of guilt that they felt i'm so thankful that they did because i've played the scenario in my head of oh my gosh what if it were my parents there after you've survived something like that, you realize the things that matter and the things that don't, and it really gives you a whole new perspective on life. Thank you so much for listening to my story. One thing that I know that I did because of surviving this trauma was to really go for my goals and chase my dreams, and I hope the same for all of you.